So let's ask the practical question, what should you invest in? That's what portfolio theory is all about. What should you buy? Let me pose that question to start with in the classic way. You've got a, you're facing a set of returns, maybe stocks, n by one vector of returns r. You have in mind a statistical model, the mean of uh, returns, the covariance matrix of returns. You know your utility function, and you can form portfolios of the returns. W is the portfolio weights, and uh, the returns are the ones you're facing, and that's the rate of return on your portfolio. Your job is find the best set of portfolio weights. Where should you put your money? Let's do that first in a concrete, simple, classic example where you can see how the computations get done. The log normal IID power utility doesn't have a job investor. So here's the, here's the setup. The investor's objective is lifetime utility of consumption. We're, we're going to do a real problem that, that at least is reasonable in that uh, regard. The investor chooses consumption over the entire lifetime and the portfolio weights over the entire lifetime. Those can change. You're allowed to dynamically trade and, and change your weights anytime you want. Your constraints are give initial wealth and how wealth evolves depending on your consumption and portfolio decisions. So uh, DW, that's the increase in wealth, is existing wealth, the risk-free rate, the portfolio decision expressed as weights in excess returns. So that's how much your wealth increases or decreases. And that's uh, the consumption. The more you consume, the less uh, you, you have future wealth. The portfolios, will now, we will now describe those. There's the statistical model. Let's start with the classic one, constant mean return, constant covariance matrix. This is very much the Black-Scholes setup. Uh, constant mean, constant variance, constant risk-free rate, and the ability to dynamically trade. Uh, that gives the investor a whole lot of interesting things they can do. OK, let's solve that problem. <coughs> First step, let's express the uh, change in wealth. Let's substitute in the model the drs. So we've got the change in wealth in terms of the underlying parameter, the mu and the sigma. So that's the constraint now uh, subject to this optimization. But you got a big head splitting problem. Your objectives here are the entire stream of future consumptions and the entire stream of future portfolio choices. How do you choose such a large space? We're going to solve that by dynamic programming, which is a, a beautiful and, and very useful technique for solving uh, hard-looking problems like that. So let's stop and think, at, and I'll show you how that works in case you don't know how to do dynamic programming. We start by defining the value function. The value function V of W is defined as the maximized value of, of utility. So after you're all done, how happy do you get from your portfolio decisions at that date? And it's a function of W, because if I gave you more money, you could get a higher level of realized, optimized lifetime utility. So that defines the value function. Now, look at the way the value function works. We can split up this objective into two little pieces. First is how much happiness you get out of instantaneous consumption, and then how much value you'll have from whatever wealth is left over time delta from now. So we break, up, we break up the problem into just think about how much do you eat and how much do you invest today, trading off current consumption, and then the value of wealth you're going to have in time delta from now, rather than picking everything all at one time. This is the key to making this problem solvable. We only pick C and W at one time, depending on the value function, rather than trying to solve the whole problem at once. And this is how people think about consumption. This is, it's not just a mathematical trick. It's how I think about consumption. It's how I think about investing. You think about, do I eat more today, not versus, do I have something to eat 30 years from now? I eat more today versus, can I afford it? Versus, how bad does it feel to lose the wealth that you'd have if you otherwise, uh, if you otherwise didn't eat? Same thing on the portfolio investments. People think about portfolio investments not in terms of their consumption 20 years from now. They think of it in terms of how much happier they'll feel if they have a little more wealth. So it captures how people behave as well as being a very useful mathematical trick. OK, so back to math. We're going to break that, break that up. Uh, I'm going to bring this V of W over to the left. So I get a 0 on the left and the difference in V of W. So you can see where we're heading. Continuous time likes differences of things. Then we'll Ito's lemma up that difference. 
So that difference in v functions becomes the rho v term takes care of the e to the minus rho, and then we have the derivatives of the value function, derivative with respect to dw and the e to term dw squared. Next step, those dw's, let's substitute in those dw's from the dw equation, and that tells us finally what the objective, we're still working on the objective to our maximization problem looks like. Here it is, up here, there's u of c, here is all the vw terms where I've substituted in the dw's up there. Now, it's no longer beautifully intuitive, this is beautifully intuitive, it's no longer beautifully intuitive because I've substituted in the things you need to do to make the uh, optimization, but it's expressing the same idea. It's expressing eat more today versus lose the value of wealth, invest in a riskier way versus change the characteristics of your wealth in the near future. Okay, given an objective, you know how to find the maximum. We just take the derivatives with respect to portfolio weights and consumption. So where do portfolio weights show up here? There's a w linearly. There's a little w in a quadratic term. So that one's going to survive. And the thing multiplying the linear term is going to survive. We're going to have a sigma w. So it's going to be sigma inverse times the mean. So there's the answer. You should do that algebra for yourself because this one's important. The optimal portfolio weight is that. Now, this is a combination of value function derivatives. Let's give it a name. How about 1 over gamma? It's a familiar combination of derivatives. And in fact, that is risk aversion. That is how people feel about gambles on wealth, which is what risk aversion really fundamentally is. So we have this beautiful formula. Uh, portfolio weight is 1 over risk aversion, inverse of covariance matrix times mean. There's a second first order condition, consumption. What's your optimal rule for consumption? Well, that, where does consumption show up? There's consumption, there's consumption. So u prime of c minus vw times c. The marginal utility of consumption equals the marginal value of wealth. That's beautiful. Uh, the last dollar used, the last dollar saved should give you the same benefit as the last dollar consumed. Then you're doing a good job of optimizing. So what does all this tell us? Let's look at the portfolio weights. This investor holds a constantly rebalanced mean variance efficient portfolio. We've derived mean variance efficiency. That's been sitting on our agenda for a long time. We talked about mean variance efficiency. We didn't say who would want to hold a mean variance efficient portfolio. Now we know who wants to hold a mean variance efficient portfolio. As a reminder, in case, that, in case you don't see that formula and say, oh yes, that's a mean variance efficient portfolio. If you want to derive the mean variance efficient portfolio, minimize variance for a given mean, that's w prime sigma w, that's a Lagrange multiplier, that's the mean of the portfolio, the answer is that the weights are proportional to sigma inverse mu. It's a mean variance efficient portfolio. <coughs> Next, uh, an interesting fact, which we'll verify in a second, if the utility function is power, we haven't said anything about that yet, but if the utility function is power in this example, then the value function is also of the power form. So this gamma, this risk aversion coefficient, is also the utility curvature of coefficient. It's not true in general, but that is true for this particular utility function and for this particular setup. Now, that, that particular example lets us derive some other. These are just classic, classic results in portfolio theory. First of all, that gamma is now a constant. This didn't have to be a constant. The, the derivatives of the value function could change over time as wealth changes. But gamma is now a constant. This value function here has constant ratio of those two derivatives. So that means that the fraction held in the risky assets is constant over time. This investor holds a constantly rebalanced mean variance efficient portfolio with constant weights. There, what, what is absent here? There's no horizon effect. He doesn't change. He doesn't get riskier or less risky as time goes on. There's no wealth effect. As he gets richer, he doesn't get more or less risk averse. He just holds the same fraction in the risky assets over time. The horizon doesn't matter. We get the same answers here if we replace this objective with an objective that you only live until capital T. It turns out the same value function holds. The horizon doesn't matter either. So very simple portfolio rule. And lots of classic, classic ideas turn out not to be right. With that value function, we also know the consumption rule. Now u prime of c is vw. 
tells us that c to the minus gamma is w to the minus gamma, or the consumer should consume a constant fraction of wealth. There's, there's a, a k here, which is a, a huge expression, which I didn't give you. It's just parameters. But it says there's a constant fraction of wealth. As wealth goes up and down, consumption should go up and down, too. Beautiful results. Where did it come from? The one fly in the ointment, as I said, that's a fact. How do you prove that fact? To complete a dynamic program, we've characterized the results of the dynamic program, but we haven't really solved the model. How do you really solve the model? Well, we have to check the equal zero part here. We have to do is we have to plug the optimal portfolio weights in there and the optimal consumption rule in there. I've written that down here. The optimal consumption in there, the optimal portfolio weights in there. Each of those, that's a function of w. That's a function of w. vw is a function of w. vww is a function of w. We have to find the v function that satisfies that differential equation, which we do by guessing the form and checking that it works. It's a bear. And that's the downside of this approach to portfolio theory. Characterizing the answers is easy. Coming up with the actual value function turns into kind of a nightmare that always gets brushed under the rug. The classic portfolio theory. Thank you.